Welcome back. Uh, in the studio now, very pleased to uh, welcome uh, Kelly J. Keane, women's rights campaigner, Standing for Women. That's your organisation, isn't it? That is, yep. Uh, uh, to explain what Standing for Women is. Mm-hmm. Explain. Explain. It's a... Uh, it's a <laughs> I'll just go, um, um. <laughs> <laughs> It's a grassroots organisation that promotes the word woman and female language, protecting it just for women. And a woman is? An adult human female. OK. Uh, and what is uh, Isla Bryson? the Scottish trans woman prisoner uh, who, uh, when still identifying as a male, raped two women mm. uh, and incredibly, uh, having been convicted, decided he wanted to uh, change gender and therefore was moved to a female prison. What is Isla Bryce? Well, he's a man. <laughs> Full stop. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Let, okay. I mean... Let's, we'll get on to Isla's case in just a little while. But but before we get there, I mean, do you think, you know, here we are, we always have this uh, problem, don't we? Because you, you, and I respect you for doing it, you just say, no, 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 born a man is a man. Mm -hmm. uh, we have rules we have to follow. If people identify as women, we have to call them women uh, in the media. And to some extent, sometimes I'm very happy to go along with it. I have problems when it's a double rapist. Mm. Uh, and so before we get on to discovering that, uh, discussing that particular case, uh, don't you think it's time we did something about courtrooms where the victims of uh, Adam Graham as he was before he decided he was Isla Bryson, have to sit there listening to barristers saying she attacked her with her penis. We've we got do. to stop that, haven't we? We do. That comes down to something called the Equal or Equality Bench book, I think it mm. is, which is guidance similar to IPSO, which is totally captured by organisations that don't consider women at all. So... Uh, the reason you have to say her penis, mm. and they do in courts, is because those uh, systems were captured long before anybody knew anything about this. Mm. You had lobbyists going in and changing the guidance to force, compel, well, to compel everybody's speech. Your mm. speech, mm. as a free journalist, uh, you, you're not allowed to say certain mm. things. Um, and in the courts, you're not either. It's preposterous. And we have to make it a lot more difficult for people like Adam Graham to suddenly say, I identify as a woman, uh, so can I go to a, a woman's jail? We've got to make it a lot more... Uh, different because I would suggest that uh, I wouldn't would be me saying this, but a lot of critics might say uh, not only is Adam Graham or Isla Bryson uh, not a, a woman, uh, she is not a trans woman either. She just made this up to try and get a cushy sentence in a female jail. But that's what's always been invited, right? If you say a man can be a woman, and then we talk about self-ID, and actually self-ID is kind of the last little bit of this, this puzzle because they've been self-IDing, men have been self-IDing as women and, and putting themselves in women-only spaces for a really long time, whether they had a GRC or not. Mm. So this is just the, it's the logical conclusion. Of course somebody would exploit it, but even if it wasn't a case that he was exploiting it, he still remains a man, whether he believes he's really a woman or not. Yeah, well, in his case, uh, uh, we'll, we'll just park that because I think we know what he was up mm. to, uh, particularly those absolutely outrageous pictures of him standing out... Her, sorry, standing outside the court, uh, showing her full m male genitalia through her tight lank lycra pants, which was basically, uh, I'm screwing the system and I think it's funny. That was mm. what that was, wasn't it? Of course. Yeah, I mean, it, look, he's not the first man I've seen do that. There's a, you know, there's a man that goes into shopping centres and does exactly the same. He just happens to be a rapist in, in front of uh, the press. Yeah, now, um, so Isla Bryson, the uh, First Minister of Scotland, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, very, very uh, progressive woman, <laughs> far more progressive than we could ever mm -hmm. be. She's so far out there, really. Mm. Yeah. Left wing, cutting edge, really great. Wants to show it as well. Doesn't get gets a bit mixed up as she did this week. Uh, now, as of this morning, she was saying. See, my contention is this, Kelly. I say, if you want to transition, if you uh, either if you're a, a biological male or, or a biological female, you want to change gender, absolutely go right ahead. Uh, but if you're a convicted prisoner. 
No. Uh, how, wait until you finish your sentence. So we could solve this problem by saying convicted prisoners cannot transition. How about that? And I don't care whether it's a, a, a sex offence they've been committed, any offence. Mm. As I keep saying, we take prison by its definition is a, a removal of rights. It takes away your very right to freedom. It takes away your right to drink. It takes away your right to vote. It takes away your right to go out for a walk. Uh, why do we give prisoners the right to transition? It's again, it's the logical conclusion of where we are. Like every time it goes back to a thin end of the wedge, this is the big fat end of the wedge, right? This is where we're all, where we've always been going. When we talk about human rights and we talk about everyone has access to full human rights, uh, eventually we talk about convicted, like the worst of convicted criminals. I guess the first leap would be to stop convicted criminals transitioning, but. If we take the state out of all of this, if we take legal recognition out of all of this and mm -hmm. we say, you know what, if you want to call yourself Deirdre, wear a dress, go for your life, but as a state, it's not any of our business or concern. And therefore, then the state doesn't have to put you in a women's mm -hmm. prison. The state doesn't have to recognise you as female when you go into a hospital mm -hmm. and you want to stay in a female-only ward. But the rest of it, go ahead, like have surgery, do whatever it is that you like. Just don't expect anybody to legally or socially have to go along with it. Would you have any objections to uh, if someone's had the full surgery uh, and is, you know, a trans woman, uh, would you have any objections to them being in a female jail? Absolutely. Explain yeah, why. I would. Explain why. Well, because what you're asking of those women in that jail is you're asking those women to not say what they can see in front of them because no matter what most women will read a man born male no matter how he transitions we will read them as male and what we found in uh there was a transgender prison study in texas i think it was it might have been california but it was huge and it was very pro trans and what it found is the criminality of men doesn't change whether they say they're women or not and therefore Whatever a man's done to himself, he poses the same threat as any other man to women. Mm. I'll tell you, uh, this is just a side issue, but uh, a lot of people are getting very hot under the collar on Twitter about uh, Isla Bryson because some people were having the temerity uh, to call her, him, uh, a a Adam Graham. And they said, oh, how dare you, you use her dead name? This is a He's raped two women. You know, mm. you think I care about his dead name. Mm. Uh, and this is the centre of the problem. So... Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, until this morning, was saying that although she changed her mind about Isla Bryson, said Isla Bryson should be in a male prison, took her a bit too long, but she got there in the end, uh, she said that, uh, that um, in no way should we consider a blanket ban on trans women being transferred to female prisons. And when we what we're talking about mainly here are, are men who get convicted of crimes, sometimes sex crimes, uh, who subsequently decide, oh, you know, I've got gender dysphoria, I'm a woman, I want to be, go, you know. So you've got to be suspicious about when that mm -hmm. happens. So, but Nicola Sturgeon, until this morning, was saying uh, we still have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. So in that jail where Isla Bryson has been now removed from is another a uh, trans woman called Katie Delatowski, calls herself Katie Delatowski, and she's six foot five, also convicted of sex crimes when a male. Uh, so uh, it's still going on. Mm. But we're hearing today that the government is now reviewing their policy on what to do about uh, biological males who want to transition after their convictions. As I said, I think it's simple. You can't. Yeah. Wait. Wait until you finish your sentence. I mean, look, I agree with you. However, I don't think no matter what they've done, I don't think any man, and I don't recognise... That's what I say. No, I'm not just saying about uh, sex criminals. I'm saying all criminals. You, 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 we take away all, lots of rights yeah. from you when you go into jail. That's the nature of jail. One of the rights we're taking away from you is your right to change gender. It would yeah. solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it? Well, I agree with you. I would take it further, though, and just say it doesn't matter when you transitioned, whether it was 20 years before you committed a crime, mm -hmm. you can't go in. And there's loads of vulnerable men in male prisons, mm -hmm. right? There's there's men who have autism. There's, there's men who are just, you know, disturbed, weak, 
uh, whatever we want to say about however we want to describe them, but there's lots of men mm. who really do suffer in, in men's prisons. What we're going to do, transfer them all somewhere nice and cushy like a women's prison? Well, quite. So just outline, if you can, uh, exactly what standing for women's position is on uh, trans women prisoners being transferred to female jails. What's, what's your stance? My stance, uh, our stance as Standing for Women is it doesn't matter how you identify, we don't recognise men as anything other than men and not one of them can ever go to a women's prison. And what is this, why is it that uh, for uh, trans women this is such an important issue that we actually, are I mean, you know my view on this. You, you want to transition? Great. You know, up to you. And uh, I'll respect. Unlike you, I, I, if they want me to call them she, her, I'll do it. You know, if it makes you happy, no problem at all. Uh, but uh, what concerns me, what I don't want to go along with, which in fact what I refuse to go along with, is you're not a woman. You're a trans woman. You're a trans woman. You're a she. You're a you're a her. Uh, but you're not a woman. You are a trans woman. And yet they seem to want the extra mile, don't they? They want to be us to all go. You are a woman. What's that famous phrase? You know. Uh, uh, What's her name? Uh, Penny Morden said, isn't it? A trans woman is a woman. Uh, that's the phrase they always come up with. But a trans woman isn't a woman, is it? Is it? Well, no, you can only be a so-called trans woman if you're, if you're a man. You can't be one if you're a woman. <laughs> I so. so uh, well, if that's... you were a man. <laughs> well, if you are a man. Uh, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that issue. As we always have to. Mm, yeah. But uh, look, it, it just comes down to... Uh, Part of this for those particular men is affirmation, validation, and part of that is also forcing and compelling other people to believe whatever they say. Mm -hmm. um, and most of us know that that's not something we can demand of other people. I can't demand, demand that you perceive me in any particular way. Uh, you know, that's entirely up to you. So I don't, it's just so entitled to expect other people to endorse whatever it is that you say about yourself. See, what, one of the problems, and you know about this uh, a lot more than I do, is if you... This is another area that I have problems with, right? It's this sort of uh, the pronoun fascism, if you like, you know, that, you know, I, I've transitioned, I'm now a trans woman, so you have to call me he and she. I'll go along with that. I don't mind. I don't really care. If that's what makes you happy, I'll do it. Uh, you don't want to go along with it. And uh, now, essentially, by law, by our hate crime laws, you don't have the right not to go along with it, do you? By our laws, if you start calling a trans woman he or him, then you've broken the hate crime laws, uh, you've misgendered them, you could face uh, legal punishment. Uh, what, you know, I, I think you should... I personally, I, I'll go along with it, but I think you should have the right not to mm. do, go along with it. Yeah, I will be gratuitously truthful when it comes to... Uh, biological sex mm. and so I, I I'm absolutely not going to give away female language to men under absolutely no circumstances whatsoever mm. um, I've been contacted on four occasions by the police specifically for that mm. and the other one was about being untoward about paedophiles but um, I, I welcome the chance to go in a court and mis mm. so-called misgender um, until you know, the logical conclusion comes that people see that this is an absolute nonsense. How important do you think the last few days have been? Because it did uh, culminate in a big climb down by uh, the First Minister of Scotland, mm. Nick, Queen Nicola Sturgeon, Queen of Scots. Uh, she did have to climb down. She did have to say, yeah, I agree, you know, a, a male rapist shouldn't be in a female prison. Uh, uh, so a lot of people have been focused on that and they've looked at all this and they've gone, this is just crazy. I've been talking about the case of, uh, it's another trans woman, trans baby, I don't know what the hell you call them. Um. Uh, but th this is in a, a male youth offenders unit and uh, he, she is 24, so quite what they're doing there anyway, I don't know, but that's where they are. But uh, she, he identifies as a baby, so the uh, wardens have to bring she, he uh, uh, um, nappies, they have to feed uh, her blended food, and when she comes out of her cell, they have to hold her hand because she's a baby. Why do they indulge these people like this? 
Can you imagine being that prison warden thinking, I just don't get paid enough <laughs> to actually have to go along with someone's fetish? I'm just, there's not enough money in the world that would that would make me do something like that. It's, it's like, it must be against their employment rights, to be fair, but, but also, like, but again... Do you, feel, do you feel, when we're talking about these absurdities, and I would suggest the Isla Bryson saga was just, just, a, and uh, there's a trans baby is now on the screen there. Not much of a baby, really, is it? Um, of course, it is a baby because she identifies as a baby. Longer, she used to be he. It's very confusing. But this kind of nonsense, people look at this and they look at uh, the Isla Bryson case and, and ordinary people, but basically, this is crazy. Mm. This is absolutely absurd. Mm. It's dystopian. It's Orwellian. So, in what I'm asking you, Kelly, is do you think that? sort of conversely or almost perversely this has been a good week for someone like you because millions of people have sat up and gone this is madness yeah it's brilliant i mean i you know we all have to ask is nicola sturgeon a secret turf and this is a long game for her <laughs> and she's just made it wonderful for all of us she is a feminist she says so. <laughs> yeah is she um <laughs> i th i think it's just it's it's good because the only thing standing for women, what we've always said what we want to do, is we want everyone to be aware of what's happening because it's all been so secret and covert, covert. So it's all about raising awareness and this actually has got everybody talking about it. And now people are going, well, hang on a minute, what's going on in schools? What are my kids being taught? And they're looking at the wider issue about how on earth we live in a society in which this has been allowed to happen. So you've got kids, uh, how old are your kids? They're, the oldest is nearly 21 and the youngest is 14. OK, and, uh, I mean, you must have been worried about them with all of this. I mean. Yeah, well, I was. Uh, I did go into school um, because they were going to have a lobby group in to talk and I, <laughs> I just said to the poor teacher, do you, do you know what I do? And she said, yeah, and I went, oh, I think this might be easier then. <laughs> um, and I just said, no, you can't have them in. Absolutely, categorically, you will not have a lobby group come and talk to my child and one of their solutions was to take uh, my son out of the class and I said but then everybody in the class has been groomed as far as I'm concerned into this cult mm. and then my son's the odd one out so that is not an answer either and I think more and more parents need to understand that ultimately they have the most power in that school and they need to go in and find out what their kids are being taught. Uh, indeed so where are we, where are we at now with your well I mean it's an ongoing campaign but uh, I'm assuming that you've uh, uh, utilised the, the events of the last few days. Have you been in touch with our Home Secretary or uh, Nicola Sturgeon? Where are you at with your ongoing campaign? Well, I, I do a few things. So today I was at Speaker's Corner where we encourage women to come out and speak. Um, and we have teachers and we have counsellors and people that aren't normally allowed to talk. I've got a film coming out in the next couple of weeks and then I'm off to, off to Australia where it's probably as bad as Scotland, if not worse. Is it? Mm. Is it? Yeah, yeah, and New Zealand. Well, it's not great in America, obviously, no. either, is it? <laughs> no. So do you think that you can turn the, the uh, juggernaut around? <laughs> I think so. Do you know what? I, I, I really do think it's just a critical mass of people speaking. Yeah. And then the more people know, the more people object, because most people don't want... They don't want boys in with their girls in schools, in changing rooms. They don't want uh, their elderly mother going into hospital and having to share a female ward with a, a man who says he's a woman. And so once people understand what's going on, um, I think this thing will crumble quite quickly. It just needs a few more people. Uh, I mean, but when you say you think it will crumble quite quickly, I mean, it, it, it's, its momentum has been mm. unstoppable for the past few years. Uh, do you think literally this week, because of Isla Bryson, because that did bring it all into sharp focus that maybe we, we might have reached some sort of tipping point? I think so. I think in Scotland it certainly has stopped the silence. I think that's the crucial thing, is to enable people to feel like they can speak. I had a lady come today for the first time to Speaker's Corner who said she feels gaslit by the state. You know, she just feels like she can't speak the mm, truth. No, a lot of us feel like that about a lot of things. Kelly, uh, thanks so much for coming.